Eric Ten Hag has encountered a few problems so far as Manchester United manager, and I think he's dealt with them pretty well. But I think there's one problem now that I really want to speak about and try and articulate in this video. Please take 10 minutes out to watch this full video because I want to speak through what I see as a major, if not the biggest maybe, problem at Manchester United. And it doesn't just revolve around the finishing, although that is a key part of it so please watch the video please drop a like on it if you did enjoy it if you learned something from it and let me know what you think about it in the comments below but let me try and explain what i feel i'm seeing with manchester united and the patterns that we're starting to see because look eric ten Hag, as i said i think he's been very impressive so far at manchester united and i think he's he's certainly encountered problems right i don't need to tell you and go back to what happened against brighton and what happened against brentford but it was the start of a season where Manchester United, well, all the positives of pre-season just disappeared, evaporated. Eric Ten Hag's response to that was, of course, that sort of infamous running session and him taking collective responsibility alongside the players. Some people questioned his methods. Nobody questioned the results that followed. Manchester United turning these two defeats against Brighton and Brentford into four consecutive wins against Liverpool Southampton, Leicester and Arsenal, which included two clean sheets away from home in succession. Manchester United turned it around brilliantly and that was down to Eric Ten Hag, his coaching and how he responded to those first two games. And then, of course, he ran into another problem and that was the fact that he found out that he could not trust this United squad. The starting 11, he felt like he could trust at that moment in time. The, the, well, the second 11 just let him down against Real Sociedad and he learned at that point that he wouldn't be able to repeat the same team selection, take eight, nine players out and expect the same level of performance. But I think against Newcastle and in these last four games, obviously Newcastle was, I believe, the first game where the result was impacted as a consequence, considering we won a home and away against Omonia and against Everton. Newcastle was where we dropped points. Craig Pawson had an abysmal game as a referee. We know that, but that's not the reason we didn't get a result from that game. But what I want to try and explain now is something that this isn't a direct consequence of United against Newcastle. I remember first thinking it away at, at Omania, and I've got an example from it here. I'll put an example of it uh, from the Everton game and also an example of it from the Newcastle game. But as much as finishing has been a big problem of Manchester United, I think we're lacking football IQ. We're lacking smart decision-making at the crucial times. And it's taking so many chances away from Manchester United. Take this chance, for example. Marcus Rashford threw on goal away at Omania, 3-2 up with, what, two, three minutes remaining. It's quite obvious what the smart play is here. Marcus Rashford, by the way, on a hat-trick, in that position, body's in the right shape as well. Marcus, bend that into the top corner. But because Cristiano Ronaldo, I think at this point, because the fact that he was chasing that 700th goal and the team, it almost felt like they had a, they felt a responsibility to get that goal for him. Marcus Rashford didn't take the shot on. Marcus Rashford tried to pass it to Cristiano Ronaldo and the chance went begging. That should have been, I mean, it was game set and match. We won through two anyway. The game wasn't affected by that. But that wasn't the smart, in my opinion, that wasn't the smart play for Marcus Rashford. It feels like he was trying to feed Ronaldo there. And in this situation away at Everton, I remember this one. United hitting on the counter-attack. Look, we go down here. Christian Eriksen plays a lovely ball across to Bruno into space. Manchester United can hit on the counter-attack. Let's fast forward here. To where Anthony receives the ball on the edge of the box. Drives towards the box. And now in this position. If you're looking at what the smart play is, it's abundantly obvious that Anthony should just be feeding that ball to Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes there. You, look, you can see the space he's got in front of him. Drive in there. Score. Or at least have a shot on target. The space is absolutely there for him. That would be the smart play. But instead, Anthony fires it across to Cristiano Ronaldo over here, who then lays it off to Christian Eriksen, who has a first-time shot on his left peg, and it just flies over the bar. That was a half chance. But if United, in my opinion, took the smarter decision at this point here and Bruno was played in, it would have been a clear-cut opportunity. And I've seen this so many times over the last few games. And this is what I mean. I'm not just talking about Newcastle. Newcastle is the first game where the result has been affected by it. But this has been a pattern we've seen over the last three to four games. 
And look, it's almost a carbon copy. You see how Anthony's there, Bruno's on the edge of the box, Ronaldo's in a position there, which isn't the most, isn't the smartest play. And that's where people are talking about this one here. As I said, it's pretty much carbon copy. Look at Anthony, look at Bruno, hands open, space in front of him, no defender there. And here we go. This is the one that people are talking about from the Newcastle game. Anthony on the right wing there, Cristiano Ronaldo in there. But look at Bruno here and look at that space in front of him here, right there. Bruno wants that ball there, so Bruno can drive through into that gap and maybe even square it for Ronaldo at the back post, maybe even take a shot on himself. Who knows? Who knows? But what Anthony decided to do, we know what he decided to do. He tried to find Ronaldo into this space here. He took a really difficult pass on. A pass which had one Newcastle defender in the way. Another one around the back of him. Three. Instead of just taking this simple ball there to Bruno Fernandes. And I've seen it quite a lot over the last few games of Manchester United. And I personally, I went as far as saying this on Twitter yesterday. I said, I think there's a bit of a problem developing at Manchester United. I think actually more with Anthony than any other player. Of everybody seemingly trying to find Ronaldo at the expense of a better opportunity being in front of us. And I've, I've pulled up three examples there, right? But trust me, there are so many more. That's Rashford to Ronaldo, at Omenia away. And we all, I, I really hoped that that goal against Everton would sort of be like, ah, cool. Ronaldo's got 700 now. Let's crack on. But it seems like United still are just trying to find Ronaldo at the expense of better opportunities. Rashford should have been taking the shot on there. Absolutely. Eriksen there to Anthony. Anthony should be laying that off to Bruno. Instead, he plays it across towards Ronaldo. Eriksen gets a chance on the edge of the box. It's a half chance instead of what should have been a clear-cut chance. And that chance there, there's no way that... Bruno is a smart play there. And this is, this is what I mean. This is the problem I'm seeing developing at Manchester United. It's not, I, I, I don't think there was any surprise that Ronaldo got taken off. And this isn't a witch hunt against Ronaldo. You'll notice I'm talking about the other players not making the smart decisions. I don't think this is particularly down to Ronaldo themselves. I think it's down to the players making the right call. Now, Eric Ten Hag, of course, he's, he's calling on his Manchester United players to start killing off teams. This should have been routine wins against Omonia, home and away, and Everton. And we should have won there against Newcastle if we were finishing better. And I'll tell you one thing that I think has to be said. Benny McCarthy, man, earn your stripes. Benny McCarthy brought into the club as an attacking coach, if I was correct, as a first-team coach. Well, yeah, we know he's going to be an attacking coach. Benny McCarthy, former striker. That's why Eric Ten Hag brought him into the team. Benny, man, let me see you work your magic. Work your magic with these players because finishing-wise, there has to be major improvements from everybody. Bruno Fernandes, Fred, Rashford, Ronaldo. Every single one of these players has to be more clinical. Against Spurs and Chelsea, we will not get many opportunities. We have to take them. But in my opinion, I, I, I think the bit that Eric Ten Hag needs to help his players become smarter. Making the right calls at the right decisions at the right time. Taking the time to think about it. And look, maybe on paper you can look at that and say, Sam, the actual, the smart call was to play it across to Ronaldo. Well, just be better then. Just be better. And you might say, uh, Sam, look, if you go there, Ericsson, to, it was the, I don't think that was the smartest call. That's that, that, that pass to Bruno right there. That is definitely the pass that should have been played. A hands open. Anthony there in acres of space. Instead, he looks over here to Cristiano Ronaldo. Instead of playing that simple ball through there to Bruno to burst into that space. That's the smart play. United just have to be smarter. We've got to be smarter with our chance creation. We create a lot of chances. I think we should have been making more clear-cut chances. That's the point I'm trying to get at here. But at the same time as that, finishing has to be better. I think these players right now, I think we're focusing too much on feeding Ronaldo. Ronaldo can be the focal point when he's playing as a striker, sure. But play the smarter balls, not just the balls that get Ronaldo in. I think that's a problem that we're seeing developing. Ten Hag has to get in control of that and make sure the players understand that. I don't know how you get that across in training without sounding like you're sort of witch-hunting Ronaldo, though. It's a tough one. But there's a lot of positives, I think, from the last few games. There are. There's a lot of frustrations as well. For me, this is the most frustrating thing. I've tried to articulate it in this, but I think we have to be better with our smart, smarter and better with our decisions in the final third. Not just about the finishing, 
It's about the two passes that lead up to that chance. I think we can make better chances if we're smarter. That's what I want to try and say. I hope I've tried to explain that properly. You let me know what you think in the comments below. But for me, it's, it might be the biggest problem that Ten Hag faces this season. He's overcome the problems of what he, that he faced earlier this season. The fact that Man United play as well. They were psychologically scarred from the, last, from the season before. So Ten Hag joined in that running session, got the collective responsibility, and the results followed. He now knows he can't trust the squad. That's why he won't ever make seven or eight changes again. And now he knows these players have got to be a little bit smarter. Help themselves to help the team. That's what I think he has to get across. You can let me know what you think about this in the comments below, but it's something I've been thinking for a while. You can let me know in the comments.